Hey, what's up, stream keepers, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today is a uh, today is we have a very special video that we are going to you know create, and uh, this is uh, thanks to Coyote KB who has uh, requested for this to be done. It is regarding uh, stream molting, so this video will be talking about stream molting, some of the uh, whys and hows and whats of stream molting, and I think this is a very you know uh, interesting topic that has been discussed uh, in in length several times and I have also uh, written this information uh, on my blog so you can check it out uh, on the on the this comments below uh, so just before we dive right into you know into the, the topic I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you guys that uh, the encouragement so far has been very good uh, for me to continue to uh, churn out new content so that uh, you guys can actually benefit from it so naturally, I, I'm actually, uh, you know, I, I don't really like to be in front of the camera. I don't really uh, feel, you know, uh, very safe or, or comfortable in front of a camera, talking to a camera. Uh, I, I'm more of like a, a writer. I like to type. I like to think through things and analyze and, and stuff like that. Uh, but I realized that, you know, uh, you know as, as, as time move on, you know, new technology, I have to learn to adapt and, 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 and stuff like that. So... Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best and uh, learning in, in terms of uh, getting in front of a camera and being used to it. So just on another point, uh, so on, on my side of things, uh, you know, regarding the streams, so the streams are actually doing quite well, uh, you know, during this uh, December period. Uh, one of the reasons is because although, you know, this, this enclosed space is uh, Fully, fully automated in terms of temperature because it's run by an uh, AC. Uh, however, the, the ambient pressure has also been uh, uh, much much lower over over the last uh, couple of days as uh, as we reach into as we enter into a monsoon season, <coughs> and and that's uh, really good because the weather is starting to cool down a little bit uh, and and the streams are really breathing you know breathing away. So another another part, maybe more on the personal side of things, as I'm actually uh, trying to complete this challenge that's uh, that's ongoing for the from October to to December thirty first, and that's uh, a running challenge. Actually, I, I enjoy uh, jogging, maybe not not running but jogging. Um, so we are supposed to complete uh, five hundred and six kilometers in a three months period, so a ninety days period. So that works out to be about six kilometers a day, and for the next, uh, you know, so I'm I'm now about uh, 169 kilometers away from the goal. So I believe if I continue to work, run, and uh, consistently over the next couple of weeks to the end of December, I will certainly get get through it. All right. So now let's get into the topic of you know uh, molting. So one of the one of the reasons why stream mode is is due to to growth, right? So they are like you know spiders, uh, snakes, where they have to shed their skin in order for them to grow. And during this process, this entire end-to-end -end process, it is a really uh, vulnerable period. So while there can be split into two different categories, like for example, you know. Uh, successful mode and fail mode, right? So even if it's a successful mode, it doesn't naturally mean that the stream will survive uh, in the next couple of hours or a few hours, you know. Uh, but from the other side of the point of view is that uh, if you have a fail mode, then definitely the, the stream will not be able to survive. However, there are some incidences that uh, I've uh, learned and understand and also uh, seen before that a fail mode doesn't necessarily mean that uh, is the, the stream will die, right? It depends on where the mode got stuck, right? Okay, so the why of uh, molting is is for growth, right? So they need to grow, and also during that molting period for uh, for for the females, uh, it is time for it to to get uh, buried as well. Okay, so let me share uh, with you what is what is the process so just now we talked about the why and now what is the process of uh, the molting uh, stream mold right so during the, the entire process of the, the stream molting 
the stream actually goes into so called like a hibernation mode for one week. <coughs> okay, so building up to that mode day, they slowly, as you can see, they will slowly they will go into hiding. They will start to uh, slow down in their feeding, and then that is where you know the the new exoskeleton beneath the, the the current shell that they have, they are actually growing and uh, multiplying. You know, not multiplying, but growing. You know, uh, structuring it it up for that for that sort of big day to come. So during that period of time, uh, uh, the, the the outer shell is, is is very hard, right? It's very hard, and the and the inner shell is very soft. So during that period of time, the, the stream is actually very vulnerable. So they, they will slow, slowly get, uh, you know, they, they slow down in feeding, uh, and then they stop stop feeding completely, uh, you know, days or hours before they they, they they move. And this is this period is a very stress stressful period for the streams, and uh, they tend to hide a lot, and that's why. Uh, hiding space is very very important uh, to in, in, in that sense. So after after you know uh, after the mode, so let's say for example if you fast forward to that day and then the, 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 the mode, right? So you can see the you know the, the there's the the shell between the head and the body, you know the the neck area. You can see that the, there is a small gap, you know, slowly opening up. And you can actually see, especially in caridinas, you can actually see if the female is buried, uh, sedded, sorry. So if the female is sedded, then you can uh, be, be more or less uh, sure that after they, they, they mope successfully, uh, then you will, the, the, the males will, will mount on them and then they will uh, uh, get buried. So, uh, so during that, the, during the moting period, uh, I mean the, during the moting period, stage that is one of the most vulnerable time of the entire uh, molting end to end process one of the reasons is because when they mold they have to kick out from from the from the old shell right so once they kick out from the old shell the you know the the the, the current new shell is very soft right so when when the New shell is very soft. There is a high chance or high tendency that there is uh, increased cannibalism risk, and that is where uh, the male to female ratio is very important. So I will talk about that a little bit later. So if let's say uh, we categorize this into two different sections right now, okay? So uh, mode fail and mode success. So just now, what I'm talking about is that during the period of time when the streams is actually trying to mold out, uh, and if if it fails, what will happen? And if it doesn't fail, what will happen? So now we talk about what happens if it fails, right? So what are some of the signs and symptoms that you can actually see? So when the mold fail, the stream is struggling to actually get out from the out, uh, outer shell, right? And if the, sh the inner shell hardens before it can get out, then it's going to get stuck. So it's like, you know, ice and salt and then, you know, getting, getting, uh, getting stuck. So it's like the salt is eating into the ice. When you put salt in on ice, it gets, uh, it, it eats into, into the ice. So it's, it's the same concept, it's the same methodology that when the stream wants to get out and it couldn't get out, uh, the water pressure and the osmosis exchange actually hardens the shell so quickly, and that you know get the you know the, the stream is actually stuck in there. So, what are some of the things that uh, things that can actually help to prevent uh, fail mode is actually a list of things. It's not just one particular element that if you change that, then the fail mode will not occur. So. One of the biggest reasons for fail mode is actually water parameters. So water parameters, as we all know that uh, if everybody you know, uses the, the, the same remineralizer, then we can actually uh, know, uh, understand and see what's, what's the, 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 the root cause. Uh, so water parameters in terms of calcium and magnesium, these two components or these two uh, elements that are, are critical for molting, uh, must be present in the water. So normally, 
uh, I think hobbies and breeders we don't normally test uh, CA and, and magnesium uh, because the test kit is also very difficult to be found and also they are very expensive to, to keep testing that. So what normally people do is that they will uh, look at what is the remineralizer. So the good remineralizer will have a sufficient uh, calcium and magnesium in there and that will help to encourage uh, better mode. Right, it doesn't give you 100% uh, more uh, fail. I uh, know uh, you won't have uh, more fail issues, uh, but a good remineralizer will actually help reduce the chances of fail mode drastically. Okay, so personally for me, I have uh, used before uh, several brands of salt uh, remineralizer, and I have now stuck to you know uh, just uh, Hua uh, remineralizer. So I think you guys can actually use. Uh, different types of remineralizer. So as long as you test the the potency or the the, the relation between um, between TDS and GH, okay. Uh, one of the reasons is because uh, there are different uh, remineralizers in the market, and the, the strength of the remineralizer is also different, right? So one GH could be uh, X TDS, right? So the ones that we have been using is uh, at TDS 90, we have at 3 GH. So if you have about 150, 160, or 170 TDS, you get about 5 to 6 GH, right? So that, that range, I think between 3 GH to 6 GH, I think that's fine. Uh, but calcium and magnesium should be present in, 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 the, in the remineralizer. <clears throat> so that's that's key. So you can actually test the uh, remineralizer strength uh, by yourself, and then you can see okay how much do you add to increase to, to that TDS. Like for example, if you get to uh, ninety TDS, what is the GH? If the GH is uh, one or two, then it means that you have to raise all the way up to one hundred and twenty TDS to get to three or four. So so these are some of the tests that you can actually do at home. To measure the strength of uh, or the potency of the the, the remineralizer, so uh, a good general uh, reference point is that at GH of three, uh, you have a TDS of about ninety. Okay, so that's water parameters uh, in a, in a very high level. So the second part of it is that uh, we talk about you no know, fail mode and all that. Is actually the source of the stream. So, so the the stream source is actually uh, very critical. If you Get uh, get from somebody who is uh, some breeders that are very reputable, uh, and you follow their ways of keeping it, uh, and using their their setup, their their, their, their remineralizer, and, and so on and so forth. Then uh, chances are you will not actually uh, experience any of these issues. Uh, maybe from time to time, but uh, so far from the last you know, two to three months, I have not got any film mode issues. So this is one of the I think one of the uh, the you know, the confidence that that I, I can get from from my breeder, right? <coughs> so the source of stream is also very important. So if you get from a good source, then of course it's it's, it's good. But if you start to mix different sources of streams, <laughs> then it, it is very difficult to identify what is the, the the issue. One of the reasons is because different breeders uses different remineralizer, different breeders uses different ways and techniques to actually. Uh, Breed their streams and keep their streams. So, so, so basically, there, there is, uh, there is very. It, it becomes very difficult to pinpoint the exact problem if, let's say, you start mixing different streams to it. Okay. So, so that's that's uh, the the two things. One is the water parameters. The second one will be the source of streams. Okay. So, so coming on to to uh, a successful, let's say uh, a successful mode, right? So just now it's about fear mode, so water parameters and source, so that's the, that's the thing. And now we come to a uh, successful mode. So does it mean that after a successful mode, the streams will not die? No, actually it's not true. Actually after a successful mode, the first few hours is, the, is where the, the streams have the highest tendency to get cannibalized, especially if, if it's a female. So if, if it's a male, it's not too bad. But if it's a female, the chances of cannibalizing is very high. And one of the reasons is because uh, the females will excrete, excrete uh, the, the hormones for, for males to actually come to breed with, with her. So, so that actually uh, 
encourage hungry males to actually uh, you know mount on her trying to breed and, and stuff like that but uh, over during that process some males may be too uh, you know, you know how, how would I put it it's uh, too aggressive right and then they injure the female and then uh, the, the females start to, to, to walk sideways and then they start to collapse so so during that, that, that period of time it is also very critical that the male to female ratio is kept at a, a low low ratio so what I normally use is that uh, two males to 10 15 females so that's how I actually uh, reduce the, the chances of cannibalizing uh, during molting another thing is uh, I will introduce biofilm because biofilm will allow the, the, the male streams to consistently you know feed so that they don't get hungry and during molting they, they find that oh there's a very new nice source of food and then they go and attack the female so that's the one of the benefits of you know introducing biofilm like uh, Galax ball or the Lu Bao uh, on, 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 that, on that front so another thing we want to talk about is uh, hiding space right so during molting uh, I talk about you know the, the, the whole end-to-end -end process but during molting you know if they don't have good hiding space it also increases the chance for the males to actually go and find a female to quickly go and uh, attack her so so having a hiding space is, is uh, one of the critical areas that we want to to, 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 to keep in mind and having right and uh, and lastly I want to actually talk about is uh, food right so a comprehensive food a staple food that uh, provides the, the entire nutrients for the for the stream uh, will actually benefit in terms of uh, you know having all the elements uh, and the vitamins and, and the calcium and the magnesium you know everything in, in, in the stream so that they can actually produce a good mold um, so one of my most important thing that when when it comes to uh, you know selection of food is that the food needs to be good in the sense that uh, the streams will come quickly to eat it right so it does, in, in most of my videos I will talk about if the streams do not go and eat the food then no matter how good the food is it's, 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 it's just laying down there it's not getting consumed so a very strong draw factor is very critical in terms of food selection and I have you know tried many many brands of food and I'm sticking to one as well so I just use one comprehensive food for all of my tanks uh, fit them well and and they come you know they swarm and they eat it and i know that they will get the benefits of all the food uh, all the, uh, you know, the nutrients that is required for a good mold so it is not one thing that that gets uh, to a successful mode but it's many things add up to become a successful mode so so this is one uh, one reason why that there is really no one pin you know one solution to to having a, a successful mode and adding all this up, you know, the water parameters, the sauce, the food, the biofilm, the hiding space. So all of these small little things add up to a successful model, right? And and there is no one best way of doing it. So uh, I have shared what I've used, uh, how I've done it, and why I have done it as well, right? So thank you for the question. And uh, so I think, you know, in, in, in summary is that if you have any further questions, you know, uh, on, on things that you would like to learn more about uh, in depth, I uh, I'll be putting out some of the other videos uh, in the next few weeks. You know, uh, it's you know it's year end soon, so I have a, a little bit more time to generate more uh, content uh, so that I can actually share all, all this knowledge to, to you guys uh, in, in in that sense. So if you like this video, remember to give a thumbs up and uh, write down in the comments below what would you would like to actually see and hence I will then you know talk about and uh, put them out in terms of priority so thanks a lot guys and peace out